And the presentation time will be 30 minutes. Then there will be a 10 minute question and answer session after that. Please give a warm welcome to Raihan Siraj. Uh, okay. Thank you for the opportunity to present the, in this wonderful event. Uh, my name is Rahan Chiraj. I'm a PhD student at the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering at McGill University, Montreal, Canada. I'm also affiliated with the Montreal Institute of Learning Algorithms or Quebec Artificial Intelligence Institute. The title of my talk today is Reinforcement Learning for Guiding Swarm of Robots Using Python. <coughs> so this is an over overview of my talk. This is the outline of my presentation. At the first, I will be motivating the application of swarms. I will then provide a brief introduction to reinforcement learning framework, which includes the model-free and the model-based approach. After that, I'll be talking about the distributed control algorithm for swarms and the framework that I will be adapting in this talk. Then I'll be discussing about the solution approach, which includes the, distance, uh, the use of distance functions and the options framework along with swarm guidance operation, as well as swarm reconfiguration. Finally, I'll present ways one can visualize the swarm configuration in matplotlib, after which I will conclude my presentation. Reinforcement learning are often used for behavior generation in robotics. This framework allows an agent to learn solving particular tasks. Swarms, on the other hand, contain multiple agents, all, all of which try to solve some objective together. Swarms in robotics have been extensively used in surveillance, fire extinguishing fire extinguish applications, where the agents maintain a particular formation. So now I'll be briefly introducing the concept of reinforcement learning. Reinforcement learning, or RL, is a machine learning framework where the agents learn an objective through trial and error. The diagram shows the framework where an agent re receives an environment state. The environment is anything that, that the agent sees. At each time, the agent makes an observation from the environment. This observation can be sequence of images, sensor readings, and etc. The agent then takes an action A at time T. In the, uh, the agent receives a uh, state at time T and takes an action A corresponding to that state. The agent then receives a feedback in the form of a reward RT and subsequently, successively the environment state changes from ST to ST plus 1 and this continues. So the objective of the agent is to take sequence of actions in an environment state that would maximize the long term cumulative reward. Okay, so now I'll be discussing about what are different types of reinforcement learning. So reinforcement learning can be broadly classified into two categories. The first category is the model-based reinforcement learning, where the agent learns the model of the environment and then takes action to maximize the long-term cumulative reward and the learn in the learned environment. This framework is useful in cases where availability of the data is limited. The second category is the model-free reinforcement learning where the agent only makes observation and is assumed that the environment states are available in demand. So in the second case, the agent can always sample from the environment indefinitely. So there are no particular limitations where the agent can be is sample um, limited, limited by the number of samples it can take it from the it can take from the environment. So the framework that I'll be using over here is the distributed control algorithm for swarms. Usually there are two frameworks which are affiliated with the distributed control algorithm for swarms. The first framework is the Lagrangian framework where trajectory in each individual agent is considered. And the second framework is the Eulerian framework where deals, which deals with the collective property of the swarms where the density distribution of the swarm is controlled as a whole. In this presentation, I'll be mainly talking about the Eulerian framework where we will be dealing with the collective framework of the agents being controlled. So this is the problem formulation. The setup is as follows. We consider a very large number of agents. It can be 100 to 1000. We assume that the agent moves in a two-dimensional Euclidean space. So what is this two-dimensional Euclidean space which consists of only the x and the y axis? This is for simplicity. And 
we let zeta as uh, denoted by the left hand side in the setup zeta is basically an empirical distribution of the swarm at time t given this setup what we want to do is an agent the objective is given this particular setup the objective is the agent should be able to reconfigure itself for a target shape the solution frameworks that we will be considering is number one at first we will be using the solution approach presented in paper one so I have referenced paper one below so what happens in paper one is that paper one presents a solution approach which is a hierarchical framework the high level control is determined by a transition matrix followed by a low level control which uses collision free trajectory computation algorithm we'll just focus on the high level control in this presentation so at first we reproduce the solution present in, presented in one which shows how swarms in beans should move and acquire the reconfiguration of a target shape the other framework that i'm going to present is an extension which is the options framework where agents are restricted to move in a local neighborhood which is practical in swarms as they will tend to keep moving slightly between maintaining the overall distribution. So let me explain the static framework at first. From an implementation perspective, to simulate the effect of a target distribution, we take an image and convert them into a binary image and get the RGB values. So this is done using the PIL library where we can see that the xi returns the target distribution of the agents which is the shape that the agent the swarm of agents should replicate we consider that there are a large number of agents so for our experimental purpose we use the number of agents to be equivalent to 3000 and their initial configuration is a random matrix so this is how the initial configuration of the agent which is pi this is given as a random matrix and pi is just a probability distribution of the target uh, of the target distribution that the agent is finally going to replicate. The cost associated for each position of the agent is computed with a Hellinger distance function. This is how an, uh, the distance function of Hel the, uh, a Hellinger distance function is coded in Python. Now, an important aspect of Hellinger distance function is that it's a distance function between two probability distribution, which works in an Euclidean distance-like manner. Now, to code the transition matrix defined in paper 1 for high level control, there are constants which are already defined in the paper and the way the transition matrix is generated. So here we generated the, generate the transition matrix as at first we generate the cost associated with the agent movement. So agent, when agent moves from particular beans to another bean, there are certain co costs which depends on the Euclidean distance of the agents. There are certain constants which are the agents which are already defined in the uh, references that I'm uh, following. And finally, after computing this uh, closed form solution, there is the part where which plots the transition behavior of the agent. The state to log function is used to convert array of numbers into rows and column coordinates. The pipeline library from Matplotlib is used to draw this particular configuration. Now, to code the transition matrix defined in the paper for high-level control, these are the constants that were already defined in the paper and the way the transition matrix is generated. This is the part which plots the transient behavior of the agent. The state to log function is used to convert the array of numbers into rows and column coordinates. The pyplot library from matplotlib is used to draw the configuration. Now I'll be presenting the options framework, where we restrict the agent to only move in ns steps and in a manhattan distance like manner and the option is a macro action which consists of different sub actions for example if you want to go to the park it is a macro action where there are different sub actions like wearing shoes getting ready for going to the park etc and each of these actions can take different time options framework consists of an initiation set uh, initiation set and a uh, set of all options, policy, and a termination condition. So this is the detail of the options framework. The policy, which is the probability of taking action in state S, is in executing an option W. In our case, the option is equal to the number of beans of the agent. Given the current bean of an agent, 
the probability of selecting options omega at bin b is given by sm this matrix is already pre-computed using the closed form solution which is already obtained from the paper that i have referenced the interruption policy for agent at any state is given by mean ns which is the minimum of the steps plus dm where dm is a manhattan distance and i'll be showing just in a in the next couple of slides how this manhattan distance is being computed the option omega is terminated when agent's bin is equal to beta b omega so that means when the agent reaches this b omega beans these options or the uh, range of options these options terminates now how the interruption <coughs> policy framework works so the interruption policy steps has two arguments where agent option and the current state the target lock here is the uh, state to lock function which basically converts takes the profile of the agent and converts them into an x and y location since we are considering only two dimensional euclidean states the uh, state to lock function will only spit out the x and y values we then basically uh, this is an implementation of intra option policy which is a function of choosing an option target and the current lock provides the x and y coordinates and sum which is the absolute value of target lock minus current lock this computes the manhattan distance so this is the function which basically computes the manhattan distance that i was talking about the option will terminate when the agent's current bin is equal to bw or the agent uh, the agent reaches this particular bin next is the implementation of the options framework and how the visualization occurs so these are done in matplotlib so i'll be briefly running through the codes and of how this visualization occurs and later in the results section i'll be presenting how the target configuration of swarms are working so in order to go through this uh, visualization the first thing which happens is that the agent chooses a random option so the sets of options available to the agents is equivalent to the number of beans which we which was used to discretize the agent space we then compute the profile transient and then in subsequent transients what what happens is that the agent keeps on following a particular option and tries to optimize the cost the cost again is computed based on what was presented in the paper and then once the agent tries to optimize its cost the agent then learns a hierarchical policy which or a function which are, which is a mapping from state to action to maintain a target configuration so let me go through the results direction uh, results section for a bit so assume that we have initial configuration of an agent which is represented with the left hand with the figure that you can see on the left on the right is a target configuration that we want the agents to learn so let's start with the two approach the first one is the static approach where we can see that given an initial configuration the agents are slowly trying to achieve the target distribution now the difference between this if you see it closely the difference between this uh, particular thing is that here we are assuming that any particular agent at a given time can move from any position to any other position so there are no local restrictions between where the agents can move so this is the solution approach which was presented in the paper where we i am assuming that i am at a particular position x and y and then i can move into any position x bar y bar which is where and that position switching happens instantaneously now let's see what happens with the options framework so if on the right you see the options framework and in this framework you will see that the agents are learning and trying to acquire the target distribution or the target configuration the interesting thing about this is that the agents now they are they cannot move instantaneously from any particular initial location to a target location what they have to do is that they have to move within some local restrictions which we have defined initially while presenting this options framework what happens is that in the right hand side of the figure this creates a more practical approach because in practice what happens is when agents in swarms the agents will move within a local neighborhood and they will try to maintain a particular distribution which which was given over here
Okay. Okay, so now this is another interesting results which was again uh, obtained using the options framework as well as the reconfiguration. So what happens is that when agents want uh, is acquiring a target distribution, at any point in time if the number of agents reduces, is it possible that the remaining number of agents can reconfigure themselves and still maintain the target distribution? So what happens over here is basically if you can see is that the agents are slowly trying to create the target distribution that, that was uh, prescribed to them. Uh, and after a particular number of transient, so after a particular number of agent movement, you can see slowly that if the number of agents de decreases, so at 50, see the number of agents exactly reduces to half. So initially what the number of agents that I have had, they reduced to half of them. So initially I had 3,000. And the engine number of engines now reduced to only uh, 1,500. So in that case, again, you will see that the agents are quickly reconfiguring themselves into this uh, target distribution. And this is only happening due to this option framework that we are considering. So basically, what I have presented so far is that how reinforcement learning can apply for, for swarm guidance the learning approach replaces the requirement of knowledge of optimal configuration. So initially the paper which was, which we had followed briefly, that paper only talked about how high level control can be achieved. And then they use a collision free trajectory algorithm for the low level control. Now what we are saying is that if you have options, one does not need to have this pre-planned collision free trajectory. They can be learned through the optimizing this cost function which was given by the agent. Now, the presented approach involves finding an optimal stochastic policy. So what's a stochastic policy? It's the probabilistic policy. That means an agent probabilistically chooses to move from one position to any other position. So that depends on the probability distribution. And then the presented approach involves finding a, sto a stochastic policy. And we use the Eulerian framework to, for a collective uh, property of the swarm because this is the framework we have uh, adapted before. And essentially what's happening is the learning, pro uh, the learning uh, framework that we have over here provides robustness in terms of non-stationary target distribution. So what's a non-stationary target distribution? So it's a target distribution where you will see the target suddenly changes. This is mostly popular in terms of firefighting scenarios where you'll see the spread of fire changes and they do not come from an underlying uh, uh, underlying fixed distribution, right? So if the target distribution changes, the same way which, which I have shown that the agents can learn to, reconf uh, to basically um, uh, reconfigure themselves when they reduce in number, the same concept can be used for scenarios where the target distribution changes. So this time, if your distribution changes, if the target configuration changes from one target to next, the same robustness skill the agents will have so they can just shift from one target distribution and quickly change into other target distribution. So basically this is what I had in mind and this is what I tried to show for um, uh, my presentation. I hope uh, it was uh, easier to follow and uh, thank you very much for your time. Please le let me know if you have any questions. Thank you very much for your presentation. Um, it looks like there are no questions at this time. So uh, I just have a couple of uh, announcements to make. Uh, first of all, everyone, please, a big round of applause for the speaker. Thank you. Uh, if you have any questions or you would like to talk to the speaker directly, please go to the uh, hallway behind us. Um, also, sponsors have their own booths, which we encourage you to visit. All participants who have purchased tickets can also participate in the sticker rally at the sponsor's booth. If you collect the specified number of stickers, you can exchange them for a limited edition t-shirt. We look forward to your participation. Thank you very much. Thank you.